Habari za subuhi, karibu. It's so good to be talking to my friends and colleagues at Muhas, and I'm so sorry I'm not going to be coming out with Rob tomorrow to um, be with everyone, but I'm very happy to have the opportunity to make this short video and to talk about some of the things I've been doing in the classroom with social media. Um, social media, I think, has the potential to really engage students and to um, take what we're doing in the classroom and it expose the outside world to it. And it's quite exciting. And so I'm going to tell you about two experiments that we've conducted in my course, Planning and Managing Maternal and Child Health Programs in Low Resource Settings, uh, using Twitter. Uh, and I think it should be interesting, and it certainly will be fun to share this work with you. So the topic of this short video today is using Twitter, harnessing the power of social media for professional development. I'm going to start with a little history of Twitter. The first tweet occurred on March 21, 2006, and it was Jack Dorsey's tweet. Jack Dorsey was the founder and inventor of Twitter, and there's a picture of his first tweet. And in the following seven years, Twitter has had a remarkable rise in use. Each tweet, which is 140 characters in length, provides a capsule of information which can be delivered instantaneously around the world. There are currently about 271 million monthly users of Twitter worldwide, and there are 500 million plus chronological tweets per day. Twitter, as many of you know, is widely used for politics, for marketing, for journalism, business, and of course, we're most familiar with it as a means of celebrity gossip. It's been a momentous week for Twitter because last, at the end of last week, uh, Twitter went public with a market cap of $24.5 billion dollars at their IPO launch. So this talk is going to cover two experiments that I've done in the classroom in the last couple of years. And I'll talk about our first foray into using Twitter and then our second foray, which actually is going on right now. And then we'll try to put together some conclusions. So let me tell you a little bit about the course that we're using Twitter in. It's called Planning and Managing Maternal and Child Health Programs in Low Resource Settings. It's taught in the Department of International Health at BUSPH. The mean age of students is about 27 and a half years, and the age range is quite uh, large, 21 to 48 years. Uh, as most public health school MPH programs, 87% of our students in the course are female, and 9% are foreign nationals. So we um, wanted to get a baseline of people's experience with Twitter when we started, uh, just before we started to use it in the class. And here are some of the results of our uh, baseline survey about half the class understood in general terms what Twitter was, but very few of them had Twitter accounts, which surprised me quite a bit. Um, only 23% uh, of students had uh, Twitter accounts, and um, but there was pretty much universal interest in wanting to learn about Twitter and how to use it in global health. Um, the most common reason for not using Twitter was that Twitter didn't seem to be an efficient use of time for the students in the class. So when we began using Twitter um, and we started to think about how we would, why we would want to use this, um, we had 
four principal objectives in mind. The first was to connect to innovative individual and organizational experience. The second was to keep students updated on current trends in maternal and child health. The third was to streamline access to useful MCH information. And finally, we thought that it would be a good tool for strengthening social cohesion of the class. So in our first uh, year, we asked students to open an account on Twitter, or if they had one, to use their own. And we introduced our objectives that we've just talked about. And we uh, gave them a series of assignments over seven weeks. And the assignment was basically to have them tweet 25 times. They, we asked them to, conclude, to include an at mention IH887 underscore BU so that we could uh, bring all of the tweets together and list them uh, for the class. And we um, asked them to, when they tweeted, to make the focus of their tweet some technical review uh, in an area that we were discussing in class. And then we asked them also to uh, comment or retweet on the tweets that were coming in the class. And um, at the end, we uh, tried to assemble these. And we actually gave prizes for the most interesting or most unusual tweets at the end of the class. And here's uh, our Twitter page. You can see some of the, the tweets here. This tweet uh, is from this year's class where um, students are running a workshop to uh, look at HIV uh, PMTCT in the uh, DRC and this is the beginning of the class and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute. So um, when we finished our using Twitter and in our class um, two years ago um, we surveyed the students again to get their general impressions and to get an idea of the benefits and limitations of uh, including tweeting as part of um, their assignment. And what we found was pretty impressive. Um, so we, had, uh, we asked them if they thought Twitter was a useful tool to uh, get updates and current news uh, on MCH around the world, and 86% said they were, and that was a 30% increase from baseline. We also asked them if it helped connect them to people and learn about global health, health issues around the world, people who were involved in maternal and child health, and 75% said it did, and that was a 25% increase from uh, the beginning of the course. And we also asked them, is this a good way to learn about public health? And 81% said it was, and that was also a market increase of 29%. And finally, um, we asked them if they thought Twitter was an effective tool to facilitate learning about MCH. And again, 81% said they thought it was, and that was also an increase of 34% from baseline. So here are some of the qualitative responses we got. I was resistant to Twitter, but it was beneficial part of the class. I was very reserved about joining Twitter because I'm already on other social networking sites. And I thought it would be a waste of my time, but I found that I can use Twitter in a different way to advance my knowledge and connections. Another student said, I plan to keep using Twitter. I like how I can keep on top of global news and other people's thoughts on the links they post. And a fourth student said, it's quite entertaining since the news that is tweeted is picked up by you um, and since you pick the people that you follow. So one of our objectives was to increase global health knowledge. And uh, one of the comments from the students was, when I went on, it was great to see how many people are excited about public health news. It made me want to be more up to date on what is going on in my field. I hope I can get more into it to stay on top of what's going on. In terms of exposure to global health news, it was quite effective. It allowed students to synthesize uh, their um, issues and problems that were happening on a global level and to break out uh, which ones were most important. Uh, interaction between students and experts 
created, um, there was some interchange uh, between professionals and the students in the class about um, the subjects that we were discussing and uh, uh, dealing with in class. And um, in terms of learning how to use Twitter professionally, I think one student said, I think it's, a, it's good that I'm comfortable using it in case I need to tweet about a program or project I'm working on in the future. Some limitations were time constraints. I think some students felt it took time and, and it wasn't a priority for them. And um, it does require work and checking and your news feed and, and uh, looking at and reading the tweets. And, and then if they're linking you to other information, to follow that link and to look at the information. So it's not a, it's, it, it can be uh, quite um, involving if you make it so. So here are the uh, are conclusions from our first experiment. The students like Twitter. Twitter expanded access to information and expertise. Twitter offered potential for cross-pollination from other sources, but Twitter did take time. And I think the ground rules for using Twitter are still developing, and I think we're still learning about Twitter, as you'll see from our second experiment. So our second experiment involved uh, a more extensive use of Twitter in the classroom. Uh, and I'll explain to you how we did that. But our objectives were really a little different for this second experiment. First, we thought that if we had students tweeting in real time during the class, um, they would um, be more engaged in what was going on in the workshop. And that um, Twitter would give them a way to um, be creative and share key messages to improve MCH, especially if they were tweeting during class and having to uh, distill and synthesize what they were hearing into these very short um, uh, messages. Workshops um, could uh, connect uh, to communities and stakeholders outside of the school, so we were interested in in showcasing what we were doing in class and making that available outside the classroom. The ability to connect to key professionals in the field of MCH, that was similar to one we had in the first experiment. We combined the use of Twitter with the use of Storify to assemble the tweets that were occurring in class and, and to create a story of the class. And I'll show you some examples of that in a few minutes. Um, we also found that it could provide direct access to current media and documents on MCH. And once we told the story of the class using Storify, we could, uh, students could use that uh, story as a study tool, and uh, we thought that would have some um, uh, traction as well. And finally, uh, as in the last um, experiment, we thought that it would create some social cohesion in the class. So our assignment this time was a little different. We asked students to open an account. We asked them, uh, we introduced them to the objectives that we've just gone over. And then we asked them to work as a team. And we assigned uh, one team to each workshop that the students were developing. Uh, and we asked those that team to uh, take primary responsibility for tweeting the key learning messages that were occurring in class while they were occurring. Um, and then we assigned a second team to take all of the tweets that were generated during the workshop and to compile them in a program called Storify and complement that with other materials so that they could tell the story of the class and pick out the most important uh, lessons or most important learning that was occurring and, and uh, make that visible to everyone on Storify. So this is um, the Storify web page and I'm going to show you one of the, uh, the workshops that the students 
prepared and tweeted and then um, assembled in this program. And this, the workshop I'm going to show you, these are all our workshops from IH 887. We had workshops on maternal and neonatal health. We had them in HIV, AIDS, and PMTCT. We had them on uh, malnutrition and micronutrient deficiencies and, and a, a number of other areas. But I'm going to show you the malnutrition and uh, micronutrient uh, deficiencies workshop. So we just clicked on the Storify website and over the malnutrition and micro nutrient deficiencies workshop scaling up nutrition in Kenya and this is the workshop that the students uh, prepared for the class the way the class works is they simulate a workshop that would take place somewhere in the world and this one as you can see here was um, created for um, to support Kenya's community health strategy and it was for community health extension workers responsible for training and overseeing the community health worker um, program and implementing the National Nutrition Action Plan. Um, the, uh, one of the great things about Twitter is you can load in a document and the students prepared a textbook um, chapter on nutrition and micronutrients and they're able to put their chapter right into Storify. Uh, there's the chapter right there, and you can actually stroll right through it, um, looking at the different uh, pages and reading the uh, textbook as uh, uh, right on the site. Uh, then uh, here's um, some of the tweets that were occurring. That's the uh, opening of the workshop, and one student saying, they're ready to learn about nutrition. Uh, they're um, going to be talking about exclusive breastfeeding and its relationship to nutrition. Uh, here are some of the workshop objectives, describing the key messages and practices for optimal breastfeeding and adequate complementary feeding, understanding how to use some of the anthropomorphic uh, measurement uh, tools, and um, counseling and negotiating skills for promoting um, feeding uh, good feeding practices and and here's a video that they uh, can put right into Storify if I click on that it will uh, play the uh, video and people can look uh, right at the video uh, as they're uh, looking at Storify so um, more um, of what's happening in class here's a student she's uh, walking us through the uh, cycle of uh, malnutrition and, uh, and there's some uh, information uh, slide capture from what they're doing uh, and on and on students are capturing some of the key messages malnutrition decreases lifelong productivity and can create complications in pregnancy perpe perpetuating the malnutrition cycle 40 to 50 percent of under fives mortality is related to nutrition. So these are all some of the key messages that students are capturing as the class is going on. Now, one of the nice things about this is that it captures the entire class, and it uh, with the visuals you can see uh, that students could actually use this to review what happened in class and to um, refresh their memory and to even study for an exam. Uh, here's a message that they put on the wall that they've captured in this photo. Uh, other uh, uh, ideas about uh, some of the key messages as we go on, but we won't spend uh, a lot of time on that. So some of our preliminary observations from using, uh, from this second experiment, we were using Twitter in real time to tweet the story of the class and then to move these uh, tweets into uh, Storify where we could assemble and complement uh, the tweets with other information. Our, uh, we, we had five major observations and these are preliminary and we hope to survey the students afterwards. But um, students are motivated and energized by seeing their work documented and presented through photos and text. I think that's uh, a great uh, tool for student engagement. 
It, uh, this uh, assignment helps students integrate and synthesize various experiences and perspectives into a cohesive narrative, and that's also uh, a great skill for them to have. Uh, students found it useful as a study tool, and several students mentioned to me that when they were preparing for their mid-year, which required them to uh, you know, discuss what had happened in their workshop and to pitch their ability to organize and conduct maternal and child health workshops to um, a external uh, reviewer that um, they said it, it was very useful not only to um, use to refresh their memory of what they'd done but also to uh, use with the person that they were presenting to uh, as an example of their work. Um, students were very engaged especially when the work that they were doing in the class was uh, noted by external groups and, and experts uh, around the world. And in our maternal and child health uh, workshop, Gary Darmstadt, who is the Gates uh, neonatal health person and author of a lot of the seminal articles on neonatal health, retweeted several of the tweets that were occurring in the classroom saying, this is important stuff, thank you. And I think students were really excited by that. Uh, students also uh, were able to, um, I think, improve their use of these tools. From and they moved over the course of the semester from summarizing what was happening in class to actually processing and articulating uh, key pieces of information uh, in the different subject areas. So that's it. I've really enjoyed uh, the chance to. Uh, make this video and um, I'm again sorry not to uh, be with you all but uh, Asante Sana for your attention and I hope to see you all sometime soon.